Hi there, my name is Alex Kirby. I'm a clinical psychologist and I'm the executive director of Montford Hall. And this is the fifth in our series of videos on substance abuse in the adolescent brain. In our last video, we discussed what brain mechanisms were involved in the disease addiction and what actually occurs when the disease is active. And in this video, we're going to talk about adolescent susceptibility to that disease process becoming active. And to start with, I'd like to cite some startling statistics. The first is that if the age of first use of a drug of abuse is 14 or earlier, there's a 40% chance that in that person's lifetime they'll develop dependence on drug or alcohol. If you can delay that first use until the age of 20, the likelihood drops to 10%. And additionally, they've done research on nicotine use among adolescents that demonstrates that they become dependent on nicotine much more quickly than adults do. So there's clearly something in the adolescent, their brain, their bodies, that make them more susceptible to addiction, both in adolescence and across their lifespan, should they be exposed to drugs of abuse as teenagers. Um, and there are likely three factors um, that come into play here. The first is uh, a developmental factor. Uh, there are stages of development, and the adolescent uh, goes through what is referred to in our in Western psychology as uh, separation and individuation. Um, they separate from their families of origin, and they develop to establish themselves as individuals. Uh, there, in other traditions, it's referred to in different ways, but it's broadly recognized that there's this developmental imperative to move away from your family and move into the world and establish yourself as an individual. To do that, you simply have to take risks. And there are a whole host of ways that kids can take risks to seek novel experience, try new things. And drugs of abuse, unfortunately, are available. And there's sufficient peer influence that kids often feel like that's something they have to do or need to do, um, if for no other reason than to check it off a list of requirements. Um, and yet, so, so they have this imperative to go out and try new things, which sets them up, um, if you will, to try things that may be potentially very, very harmful to them. Drugs and abuse are one of those things. The second thing is that there's well-documented inability among adolescents to perceive risks and respond to negative consequences. So they could be using and not know that bad things are happening simply because they're not wired for that ability yet. As we get older, our ability to gauge risk our ability to respond to negative consequences, our ability to resist peer influences, they all go up. But at teenagers, it's well-controlled research demonstrates their inability to do this reliably or effectively. So you've got those two things that influence this, pro this process and their susceptibility to addiction. And the third thing is, and it's, and it's related to these prior two, is that their neurobiology is changing dramatically. So that they've got... Um, uh, drugs of abuse would tend to corrupt the otherwise normal development of their brains. And those statistics I cited earlier point in the direction of that susceptibility, so that there's, their brains start to, as they develop, um, neural pathways as they become more refined may get corrupted such that they are predisposed to become more likely dependent throughout the course of their life, and the research overwhelmingly indicates um, that that's the case. So the challenge in working with adolescents is to accommodate their need for individuation, accommodate their need for risk, but risk such that they survive, they don't become addicted. Um, those are the big challenges that we face in working with adolescents is helping them take risks that are going to aid and abet them in this process of separation and individuation, and yet not do them any physical harm or set them up for a lifetime of struggle with addiction. So I hope you find this, I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you'll join us for future installments.